Ooby Doo, it's everyone's famous, famous, favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And today we're going to look at the uh, SMC Pentax M uh, 1-2, to it's F2, 50 millimeters. This is a K-mount lens. It's on the, the K200D. Uh, this is a 10 megapixel pixel camera. It sort of has an advanced menu. Why don't we just look at the menu real quick? While we're here, huh? Uh, since this is a manual lens for a shake reduction, you got to uh, dial in the number. So I, I put in 50, okay. Um, menu. Um, this is all standard stuff. Select the AF point when you're in manual mode. You just get the center, so that's pointless. JPEG quality, quality is uh, always the best. Format, all this stuff is standard. Auto power off, folder name, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it has dust removal and sensor cleaning. That's nice. Now, in these uh, K-series cameras and uh, for all the Pentax line, um, you have to, uh, auto bracketing, just white balance, superimpose, AF and remote control, slow shutter speed noise, Oh, let's see what I got on and off. That's that's the only things you get. High highest no noise reduction. Oh, look at that. Off, weak is weak and strong. So I have a weak. Okay button when shooting. Uh, e dial and program. Oh, green button. Green button and manual. Uh, so in green button and manual, you have to put it in. Uh, it's a TV shift, which means. Uh, well, when you adjust it, it adjusts the shutter speed, and it doesn't care about the aperture. Uh, so that's the, what you have to do there. Uh, flash, white balance, preview, display. Oh, preview method. Um, I have optical preview. So this way, when you put the green, push the green button, it stops the lens down, and then uh, it, the camera sets the proper shutter speed based on that. So let's leave that there. Display sensitivity, saving rotation in, in, info, catch and focus. What's that? Uh, what do we got here? Catch and focus is enabled. Okay. Using aperture ring. Ah, uh, very important. Pictures can be taken even when the aperture ring position is other than A. Sure, you got a manual lens. I hit OK. Get rid of this. Let's shut this off. So I have this manual lens. It's manual, but it has an automatic aperture. So on some cameras, you could uh, uh, take a meter reading wide open, and then it would stop down. And then some other, I'm talking about fill cameras now, you would press a, a stop down button, and say you set it F8, it would stop down, then you take a meter reading, and then you could click the shutter, but as soon as you look at a stop down button, it opens up. So this way you can always focus wide open. All right, so this is basically what this thing's doing. It's taking a stop-down meter reading, meter reading mode, but you can still focus wide open. Uh, so that's what's great about it. So uh, the, what, the only thing manual about it is, is the manual focus. Now, in the Pentax world, uh, on the bottom of the viewfinder, they have like a LED status bar, and you, there it says like a hexagon-shaped indicator, and that thing has to be on in order for the focus to be correct. But, as you can see, uh, this... Oh, I have to take it off because they have this stupid flash thing. Uh, they all think that was cool, like a, spo like a spoiler on a car or something. Uh, so, but it gets in the way. So, so it has uh, the aperture ring, right? You set your aperture ring to this uh, red diamond in the middle, like a fate. And then, if you move the infinity mark to 8, since this is 50 millimeter lens, Everything from infinity to, uh, uh, well, let's see, five meters. Five meters is what? 15 feet. Infinity to five meters is in focus, pretty much. Five meters is 15 feet. So, and if you go to F22 and set to infinity, you could get down to past uh, six feet. Everything would be in focus. But, of course, then you get diffraction effects and all that nasty business. Now, in today's uh, photo shoot, uh, I did I did town and country, like I always do. And on the, 
February the 18th, I went to the park. And it was 25 degrees, so it was pretty cold. And um, I really didn't have any problems. And uh, I, by hitting the button, I got the proper exposure. And uh, by using the hyperfocal distance, it's called hyperfocal distancing. Uh, I was shooting at uh, F11 and F16 because uh, Saturday was cold, but it was bright sun. So I was using the stop down like that. And then uh, in order for fail safe, I wouldn't put it all the way 16. I put it like somewhere here. I did a lot of F8 and fast shutter speeds. And I also went to 16 too. So, and then I got good results, but then you're talking about up the field. Now, Sunday, when I went to the city, uh, I got there just at sunrise, you know, around seven o'clock, it's the end of February, the sun came up and the sun was up and it was shining through the clouds, but there were a lot of cloud covers. So it was uh, not continuous sunshine. It was filtered sunshine to uh, cloudy bright. So I was running ISO 800 and I was using the F4, F5.6 and F8, but mostly F4 and F5.6. Of course, uh, uh, on the close-ups, I focused so that the focus indicator and I shot and then uh, for uh, longer shots I was using the uh, hyperfocal distance now look at f4 f4 only gets you down to like 25 feet or something and f 5.6 and eh, maybe gets you down to 20 feet so you really had to focus and actually uh, the pictures came out pretty sharp so I, I can't complain so what's the bomb dollar You'll, you're gonna look at the, the pictures following but this is another key lens right uh, there's the Pentax makes a Pentax M 28 millimeter f 2.8 and I highly recommend that lens and I recommend this lens but there's only one thing I want to point out I did a video about this lens this lens got dropped and you can see it got hit right there and uh, the focus ring is a little egg shaped if you look really closely and it was rubbing on the lens barrel and it made a mark and so you can see there's a mark here and what I did was I took a rubber mallet and a block of wood I took the lens off the camera and I started hitting uh, the focusing ring around the opposite side to see if I could un egg shape it and it wouldn't rub and I did it works really good now it was really hard to focus and now it's pretty easy to focus and just think this lens got dropped and it, it tapped it in with a rubber mallet and then you look at the pictures and you decide whether they're good or bad I think this lens is another really nice lens so uh, these Pentax M lens are a dime a dozen but a lot of them are in rather uh, shall we say uh, uh, they've been tracked around a lot of rough corners this one except for the drop where it dropped it's in perfect condition well it was in perfect condition so uh, the optics are perfectly clean and clear and the rest of the lens looks like it's never been used except for that one spot where it got dropped so maybe you could pick a, up a lens like this for 25 bucks and you're good to go but some of them are even worse condition where they're all scuffed up and maybe the lens is a little foggy on the inside and they went like 25 or 50 bucks for that it's getting to the point where if you want a perfect specimen you gotta go over 100 bucks now this is interesting if you look at the other big two uh, camera and lens makers, which is Canon and Nikon. Uh, Canon, especially the older glass, like the FD mount. Crappy examples are going for hundreds of dollars, and excellent examples are going for multiples of that. And then I see some of the lens line, you can, don't even see them anymore. Uh, Nikon fares much better. Some of the uh, old F lenses, like the AIS, they're still making them. And they cost like 500 bucks new. So in order to get a perfect specimen, you got to pay 250 to get a perfect used specimen. And um, but it's spotty. Nikon is spotty. They have some excellent glass out there, and they have some so-so glass out there. More than modern glass is sort of so-so. So, uh, but if you look at Pentax, they made since they were always a cheaper brand, and people tended to buy them more than. Uh, uh, Canon or Nikon, there's like uh, way more of these out there where there's you can still get excellent examples. Uh, I really like this lens, even though it, it got dented, which is here neither here nor there. But optically, it's excellent. It takes excellent pictures. Uh, maybe even better than the the Pentax 28. 
And this is like a telephoto lens itself. Of course, I went only with one camera, one lens. I did all my shooting where I had to back up or move away, or I was just stuck where I was if I couldn't. But then you could crop this. All right, 10 megapixel, um, you could get a three, a three megapixel crop, and it's like a telephoto lens, sort of. And um, I highly recommend this lens, especially, you know, that's another thing. You could, you could either go like for a perfect example or could you could go for like a very good example or a bargain example where maybe it's banged up and the optics are dirty and may have uh, like a worn look to it. So uh, I know the history of this lens, so I'm fine with it. But when you buy a lens used, especially from like a, one of the big stores, you don't know. All right, they'll say uh, from uh, it, the range could be from a... Uh, 10 plus, which is good, all the way down to one, which is crappy, and other people use excellent, very good, good, or, uh, you know, uh, bargain or whatever. So uh, you have to keep that in mind uh, when you go lens shopping. But, you know, crappy examples, uh, perfectly usable crappy examples, eh, 25, 50 bucks, that's what things are. I'm talking about, you know, the beginning of 2023, and I'm watching the price of used gear go up. Now, I started getting uh, heavy-duty into vintage glass right before all this COVID crap started. And, man, I picked up some bargains. I mean, I can't believe that uh, the prices I paid for some lenses and seeing them now. So, but uh, this is still a good lens. They're, uh, rel they're readily available in all different grades. And depending on your budget, uh, you know, you could get one cheap or go uh, high-end pick. Even a perfect example, 125 bucks would be perfect with lens caps and everything. So I highly recommend this lens if you want to complement, like say you bought the uh, the Pentax 28 2.8, then you would have like a sort of a wide. Actually, this uh, on a crop center, this is like a 75 millimeter equivalent to 35 millimeter, and a 28 is more like a 42, so that would be more of a, nor a slightly short normal lens, and then. Um, but still, if you want to have two vintage lenses and you want to get them cheap, you can't go wrong with the 28 2.8 or the 50 millimeter uh, f2. Now, uh, Pentax made a whole uh, different range of normal lenses. They have 55 uh, 1.7s. They have 50 millimeter 1.8s. They have 50 millimeter 1.7s. And uh, you know, uh, I can't say how good those are, but I know this is a really fine lens and I highly recommend it. And without further uh, doggy do, let's get into examples and, and check them out. Now, this has been an anomalous winter, the winter of 2022, uh, 2023. And uh, this was February uh, the 18th, early in the morning around uh, 8.30 or 9 a.m. or something like that. It was 25 degrees there. And uh, this lens performed admirably. And the camera actually performed admirably too. I was very pleased with the outcomes, especially since uh, I read the manual and see how it worked. Now, uh, a lot of people may say, uh, uh, everyone's favorite boomer and uh, philosopher photographer, what's your philosophy? Well, my philosophy is to take pictures or die. Now. Uh, I have a collection of vintage glass, and I thought I would just uh, take these uh, series of photo shoots so you could see exactly what's what. You know, like, should I get this lens? Shouldn't I get this lens? Should I buy this used camera? And here's a series of pictures where you could just look and see. And as usual, this is taken with the K200D 10 megapixels, and I did a full frame crop, 16 by 9. Uh, resized to the 1920 by 1080 to fit this uh, movie format. And then I did a 1920 by 1080 uh, crop of a corner uh, or a center, and I labeled, labeled them A and B so you could follow along and see what's happening. And, uh, well, you would expect that uh, uh, prime lenses are going to be sharper and have less aberrations than zoom lenses of the same error. That is, uh, you know, anywhere between the 60s and the 80s until they went all autofocus and switched over to uh, uh, digital sensors. So these are our film error lenses. Um, 
I happened to come by this lens because I bought a Pentax K1000 body and it had a lens attached to it. Uh, unfortunately, it met with an accident and I was able to fix it because only the focusing ring was slightly out of shape and it was rubbing against the lens barrel. And uh, as you can see, this is a really well corrected prime lens, 50 millimeter, a quote unquote normal. Uh, now on these crop sensors, it's like a 75 millimeter, uh, which is neither here nor there because I could either move closer or far, farther away from a subject, or if it's far away, I got a little benefit of a slight telephoto effect. Of course, this is a bright sun. I was probably using uh, 200 ISO and 100 ISO on occasion. I was still stopped down to F8. In fact, I use F8 almost exclusively throughout, although some F11s also. And uh, I tried to use the hyperfocal distance where I sticked infinity mark to whatever uh, F number I was using. And it's got the range between uh, uh, those uh, F number markings on the barrel. That's where I was in focus. Of course, uh, if I was out of that range, uh, like these are close-ups here, uh, I actually did focus and I watched the focus confirmation of viewfinder. This is f4 and I use a super fast shutter speed because I just want to see how it would perform and it performs really good. Now these subjects are three-dimensional they're not completely uh, flat and uh, the camera wasn't completely parallel to them so you may see some out of focus uh, on one corner but it's not aberrated. You know, it doesn't have chromatic aberration, it doesn't have a, a coma, blurriness from coma. And that, that's really great. Uh, so this is another key lens. And they're relatively cheap and they're very readily available. And I highly recommend that if you want to get into vintage lenses, you get the SMC Pentax M, which stands for manual, F2 50mm in a K-mount. Now they also have uh, uh, similar lenses in a screw mount, the M42 screw mount, which I'll probably do uh, some sort of photo shoot on them, they being older. Now none of these lenses are in production anymore. Uh, the M series, they've been phased out. Now they have uh, the AF, the DA, uh, all sorts of weird uh, suffixes and prefixes on them. Uh, some they changed the optical uh, formula and some they didn't. Now uh, what's interesting is on a mirrorless camera you could do the live uh, focusing and magnifying and get precise focus but here you have to use the, the whatever the camera has uh, you know their, their auto focus mechanism. Uh, or, I or I happen to have some uh, uh, Pentax digital K bodies and of course I'm going to use them on that. But, you know, if you get a dumb adapter and slap them on and you just go ahead. Now, some adapters, there's two types of adapters. Some, uh, you just put the lens on and that's it. Some have like a, 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 a ring you turn that would either open or shut the aperture. So you could preset your aperture to say F8. You could stop it down to whatever uh, stop down metering you have to do. Then you can open it up again and get precise focus wide open. Uh, so uh, I would tend to get those adapters that have the, the stop-down uh, ring on them. Uh, there's some ice there when I was there. Uh, this has a little bit of ice. Now I was, uh, had to be like 12 feet away from these icicles. And icicles are only like 6 inches tall. So uh, this camera, is, uh, lens combination was really perfect. I really liked it. Uh, I highly recommend this to anybody. Get one of these. Um, I like to go to park early and especially when it's like uh, extremes of temperature whether it's really super hot or really super uh, cold or there's a threat of a terrible rainstorm and then usually there's no one there and you can walk around and have the park to yourself. I did see a couple people, some dog walkers and a couple, a few couples walking around but uh, otherwise the park was pretty deserted. So you can see this is, uh, now remember this is only 10 megapixels and I, I had to, uh, you know, sample it down to fit this film format, but it looks really, really sharp. Really sharp, really contrasty. Uh, you can see the fine branches aren't blurry or anything. 
like you see on a lot of zoom lenses. Now, uh, this is more simple construction in as much as the lens cell is fixed and only moves back and forth, whereas a zoom lens not only does it have to move back and forth unless it has internal focusing, but the, the lenses have to change in relationship to each other. And under extremely cold condition, that may uh, present uh, problems in, uh, uh, you know, the, the less than ideal uh, relationship of all the glass and the camera. So I think this has it going for it. Now, if you have an interchangeable camera, lens camera, well, then it's no big deal. Say you have a, a 28 millimeter or 24 millimeter, you got this 50 millimeter and 100 or 135, then you just swap them out. Of course, you can miss a picture while you're changing lenses, whereas uh, a zoom is, would be seamless from going from a wide to a, a tele uh, range. And, you know, this thing had excellent uh, tonal range. Uh, it was resistant to flare. Uh, all right, now this is a uh, Newton. Uh, this is a town you folks really haven't seen much. Uh, I try to get there once once a year, but I haven't gone there in quite a number of years. And as usual, I like to get there in the morning, and a Sunday morning. And, you know, this is a county seat. Uh, Newton is the county seat of Sussex County, in the great state of New Jersey. And uh, Hackensack is the county seat of uh, Bergen County and um, well the, I live in Passaic County but I would never go to Patterson because it's so scary. Patterson looks like a real rough and tumble neighborhood and uh, I'd rather go to like safer neighborhoods. Oh and Morristown is the county seat of Morris County and they all seem to be uh, like a nice towns except for Patterson. I don't know why that is but uh, if you read the news a lot a lot of scary stuff happens in Patterson. And then look at all the quaint shops they have. They have this Cornwell Clocks. That's been there for as long as I can remember. And uh, a lot of stores were empty. For many years they were empty. And it looks like the, they were going to uh, get uh, stores in there. But uh, they couldn't pass a, a code or something. And uh, well now it's like any town center. There's eateries, ethnic eateries. There's a hairstylist. There's clothing stores, uh, stuff of that nature, antique shops. That's what all these town centers have because everything, everybody buys everything online or they go to a big box store on the highway. And the highway, uh, it's only like maybe a uh, half a mile away and it's a big strip that's maybe five miles long. It's just full of all the big box stores that you could imagine. Name a name and they got it there. So how can a mom and pop shop compete with that? So, uh, like I said, it's the same as always. They got the Civic Buildings, and they got mom and pop uh, eateries. Uh, the hairstylists are all over. Uh, liquor stores, of course. Uh, pizza joints. Uh, things that you would expect to be on a main street. And all these main, uh, these uh, county seat towns, they have the main street, and they have a strip. There's uh, all stores. And like a hundred years ago, it must look all modern and futuristic and everything. And now everything sort of has a run-down look to it. And it looks to me like uh, this town, Newton, is going to start renovating and doing some urban renewal where uh, all these uh, old buildings, except the ones that are designated historic, are all going to rip, be ripped down and replaced with uh, more modern uh, facilities and whatever that entails. Now, pay close attention to a lot of these buildings. They, these are old brick buildings. Uh, you know, they're not modern brick buildings. And if you look at the ward work on all of them, uh, they all look a little ratty. Now, I noticed that uh, a lot of ethnic eateries, uh, they painted them in uh, bright and vibrant colors and contrasting and everything. Uh, but you could still tell that the ward work is uh, beyond its... Uh, uh, it's prime, so to speak. But then if you see the tops of the buildings have all this fine detail, it must have been very spiffy when it was all brand new. And of course, we're talking about 100 years later or more, and it just has like a, a rundown look to it. And I would imagine that a lot of these buildings are just going to be trashed and replaced. And some of them already have. Oh, liquor stores are all over. That's America for you. 
uh, you know, the old uh, hairstylist shop and spas and some clothing stores and uh, uh, new age stuff and uh, that's what they got. And then uh, these restaurants, they come and go. This, this, I remember years ago I was there and I saw this sign, but now it's all boarded up and uh, with these pictures of saying, this is what Newton's going to look like. And it's all going to be ultra modern and, uh, you know, all this quaint, uh, uh, distinctive characteristics is all going to be gone. Like this building used to be some sort of flower shop big flower shop and I guess they went out of business for one reason or another and that's why I like going back to these places because uh, some stores last a long time and some come and go uh, it's the English building well I guess they're gonna have to change the name to the Spanish building <laughs> that's America <laughs> everything is all ornate of course everything was closed uh, I couldn't get a bagel or a cup of coffee or anything, which is just as well because, uh, you know, you got to pinch your pennies these days and watch where your money goes and uh, no one knows what's going to happen next with the economy or the nation. But look at the color of the, the color and look at the, uh, uh, the tonal range. It's the micro contrast. This is a fantastic lens. It pairs well with um, the same manufacturer, SMC, uh, Pentax M28 millimeter 2.8. So uh, you, if you're too cheap and you can't get one lens, you only get one lens, get one or the other. But if you could splurge, you know, get both of them. And if you get a, a, a well-used copy, they, they're only 25 or less than 50 bucks each. And, you know, better examples go for more money. I don't remember Midtown Collision being there. This looks like some sort of new concern. CJ's Barbershop? Well, uh, they're established 2009, but I don't remember uh, seeing that there. Here's a shot down Main Street. Now, this uh, notice the this perspective is sort of squashed. So, uh, what happens is all lines meet in infinity. So, even if you use a wide angle lens and you zoom up, on a center portion of it, it'll still have that like telephoto look to it, where its perspective is uh, like sort of squashed. So Montclair uh, is a big town, but it wasn't a county seat. Uh, but they all have this same look, these towns uh, that they were a long time ago. They're all like uh, civic centers and the hubs of commerce and everything, and how the uh, uh, you know, United States has changed its, its culture. You know, from uh, uh, people going out and shopping locally to now online in the big box stores and malls or uh, uh, strip joints, on, strip malls on the highway, where there's just, uh, you know, miles of the stores. And of course, like, they got the signs, all the cool signs. I really like that. You know, the people dream these things up. Look at this, the Plaza Restaurant established April 30th, 1936. Wow, they've been here a long time. Uh, this clock is a pretty cool clock. It looks like it's 100 years old. Maybe it is. And it, 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 that actually was the time. <laughs> I love reflections. You know, they're pretty cool. Uh, now, uh, look at this close-up. I pixel peeped on this uh, close up here. No, I couldn't read the guy's license plate, but it's just as well I would have to blur it out. A, a, a lot of these towns, they have their m memorial to the Civil War. I guess the Civil War was like uh, RJ6 now, you know? But who's the good guys and who's the bad guys? I don't know. Here's a reflection, patriotic uh, flag, insurance agency. Uh, here's some fancy woodwork close up. And, uh, you know, that's a hassle. I mean, uh, with wind, rain, sun, snow, uh, I guess you always got to be scraping and painting these things. So uh, it's a lot of work. And, of course, they all have uh, big, gigantic fortress-like uh, churches in them. I know a lot of churches like to have red doors. 
That's, that's something I noticed. There's a nice stained glass window from the outside. It must be really cool on the inside. The services were at uh, 8 o'clock, and I wasn't going to stick around that long to see if I could get in. The Hill Memorial. This is now a museum. But look at the woodwork. You know, the woodwork. All the woodwork needs is like this painting. So this is County Courthouse. It's weird. This town has like a... Uh, these sharp S turns and the, they got a little green you have to go around and it's one way where you can't can only make a left here oh this picture I took this picture because it has a fallout shelter sign on it it looks like it's a Brazilian years old and if it, could you go there and hide there in case of a atomic attack from some uh, evil nation or maybe we'll nuke ourselves who knows and there's that got signs all over and I guess they help, but if you're driving through town and you're not, not familiar with it, here's a close-up of the Civil War Memorial. I'll have to compare this one to the one they got in uh, Morristown. Morristown had a taller obelisk than this one. It's like twice as tall as this one. And at least they had the guy on top. I'll have to check that out, see if he wore a mustache and you know what sort of rifle he was holding in his hand. I took a picture of this fire plug against the gray wall. And besides, it's a good test of this lens. Look, at this is the upper uh, left-hand corner. It looks very clear and unaberrated. It's not perfect. I don't expect it to be perfect. But hey, you know, this is on a crop sensor. So you're, what's it like on a 35-millimeter film?